So welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Ann Baker. I'm the Vice President of the National Peace Corps Association. We're very pleased this evening to be doing this webinar uh, to learn more about TCP Global and the opportunities that TCP, TCP Global offers uh, to NGOs uh, and other organizations working through the Peace Corps network and, and elsewise uh, to uh, produce some microloans and really help improve the lives of individuals and communities around the world. Um, I am going to be very brief um, and just uh, say welcome on behalf of National Peace Corps Association, TCP Global is one of our affiliate groups. We're very proud of that. And we're proud to share the resources that they have to offer to other groups. So I'm gonna turn it over now to Helene Dudley and she is going to lead us through um, a few different uh, parts of the presentation and uh, let's learn more about TCP Global. Up to you, Helene. All right. Thanks, Ann. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ann and National Peace Corps Association for making this opportunity available. So can we start with the slides now? Okay, so I'm Helene Dudley. I'm here in Miami. I've been associated with the Columbia Project TCP Global ever since it started um, back in 2000. Are the, are the slides showing? There we go. Okay, so, so TCP Global started approximately 20 years ago in Colombia as the Columbia Project to build zero overhead sustainable microloan programs. Uh, and now we're available to help any RPCV or RPCV group to build loan programs anywhere in the developing world. What we do is extremely simple, but it took us seven years to figure it out. Then we tested it for seven years in Colombia, and then we went global in 2015. We started working in Niger, Guatemala, and Peru, and now we're in six countries. And we're prepared to help other people replicate what we do. Um, our guiding principle has always been to first do no harm. Uh, we know that the road to hell is paved with good intentions, and we try to prevent ourselves from going astray primarily by one, We've, we work through groups that are already working effectively in grassroots community, people who know the local, um, no, local situation have, and have demonstrated their effectiveness in aiding marginalized communities. We also delegate maximum decision-making to the local level. They know much better than we do sitting here in Miami or New York or Washington, what are the best opportunities for development and what's appropriate. We also try to never create expectations that we can't meet. For example, in the 19 years that we've been doing this, we've never had to say to a partner, a qualified partner, oh, we don't have any funds to give you. Um, you know, we, don't want, we don't want to disappoint people and create unrealistic expectations. And fourth, we've structured our program to be a very results-oriented program that keeps the focus always on the success of the borrowers. If the borrower does well, then the local organization makes more interest so that they have money to do their special programs. It also means that they have those return funds that they can use to, to lend out again. So when the borrower does well, the host organization does well. And when they both do well, TCP Global has a better chance of attracting new donors and new partners because we have good statistics. So it all starts with making sure that the borrower is successful. That's another reason we don't want our programs to grow really large because the, the local organization can successfully mentor maybe 30 to 45 loan recipients. But if they have 100 open loans, they really can't give them the personal attention that they need to make sure that they're successful. Another thing we do to uh, avoid uh, doing any harm is we, we help our partners to learn by small mistakes. We start off really small with just $1,500 for loans. And then if they manage that well, then we keep feeding them more money for loans um, so that they, they, they learn as they go, go along and they develop more skills and then they can manage larger amounts of money. Uh, we also have structured the program in a way that um, that it's sustainable from the very first moment that they get funds. If, if everybody on the TCP Global Board just disappeared tomorrow, all of our existing programs could continue operating on the funds that they already have. 
what would be lost, of course, is they wouldn't have the ability to expand. And um, we also wouldn't be able to open up our program to um, other communities. So the next slide. So our, our mission has always been twofold, obviously, to provide loans for marginalized entrepreneurs, um, because even the smallest businesses need loans uh, from periodically to expand or to buy more materials. And, um, but our second part of our mission, which is equally important, is to strengthen grassroots organizations that are effective in serving marginalized areas. Uh, when I was a Peace Corps volunteer in um, Slovakia in the 90s, what I observed was that the organizations that were really good at attending um, international conferences and being on panels and being on workshops, they were the ones who got international funding. Meanwhile, the organizations that were out in the field uh, and actually helping people improve their lives didn't have access to funds. So we don't give lots of money, but we do give the opportunity to earn about $2,000 a year by running the microloan program. So we're helping those grassroots organizations by giving them some operating funds um, to work on. Okay, next slide. So the, the goals of the webinar are one, I hope that you will understand how the simple microloan model works uh, and, and see its potential to transform a community. If you haven't already read the article, I, I suggest that you go to the issue of Worldview magazine that's on um, Peace Corps Connect on, online. Um, go to the Worldview magazine and then click on the issue that has the picture of Harris Wolford on the cover and then go to pages 32 to 34. Uh, the story is called Empowering a Village and it's how Virginia Emmons in Niger started a school 15, and then 15 years later after she had left Peace Corps, uh, her school had managed to pretty much educate everyone in the community, um, but there, there were still no jobs in Cabe Fo. There wasn't even a tree in Cabe Fo when she arrived, so there wasn't much economic opportunity so she decided to introduce microloans. And through the microloan program, the people have been able to, um, there used to be hardly any cows or goats in the community. Uh, they've gotten loans to, uh, to, to buy animals. There's a lot of animals. They used to be very vulnerable to, to food insecurity during uh, droughts and uh, the non-productive season. They've been able to stockpile grain. So, they made the families much more secure. And it's because of, first of all, because of the education program that Virginia started, but then the microloan program was an important piece of their development. We also hope that you'll recognize what you can do for your Peace Corps community and other underserved communities. From the comfort of your home, you can help by mentoring these uh, communities, either through Skype or through, um, through internet the, and the Columbia Project, TCP Global would be right there by your side, helping them to develop a microloan program. Every one of our programs has challenges there, but I see these challenges as really opportunities in disguise. We work through the challenges and we're able to build strong programs that help these communities. Um, okay, next slides. Okay, so this is a four minute video. Anne, could you play this, which explains much better than I can how the program works. We have this, this video is also available in, in Spanish. It's also available on YouTube as TCP Global. Is, is this Sorry about that. Um, it seemed that you were, you were, let me, let me start it over again. Uh, let me start the video again. Um, it looked like you were um, talking over it. So let me start it again. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. Let me, okay, here we go. Ooh. Why is it? all great out here. Sorry about that. I tested this just before we started and it worked perfectly then, of course. 
I know all about that. Yes. <laughs> okay, let me try this one. Hi, I'm John, and I'd like to tell you about TCP Global and the kind of work that we do. So what is TCP Global? We're a team of consultants based in the US, and we help finance microloan programs all around the world. By enabling NGOs to create their own microloan programs, we both support marginalized entrepreneurs and help create revenue streams for those nonprofits. Now, you might be wondering, what makes TCP Global so special? Over almost two decades of work, we have funded NGOs with missions that range from primary education to health to economic empowerment and community organization. In this way, we make our services available to a wide variety of NGOs. After all, our objective is to support NGOs' missions, not to change them. With TCP Global, the bottom line is pretty simple. As long as the NGO and its programs qualify and meet our criteria, they never have to send any money back to us, and we never get involved with their decision-making process. Now, let's get down to brass tacks. How does a TCP Global microloan program actually work? Our objective is to help fund organizations that are already working on the ground. So, in order to qualify for a TCP Global microloan grant, an organization has to meet a few requirements. First, they need to be a registered NGO in their country. Second, they need to have a bank account. And finally, they need to serve a poor, high-needs community. Now, for NGOs that meet these requirements, we grant funds to start a microloan program, usually in installments of 1,500 US dollars. This 1,500 is then used by the NGO to finance microloans in the local entrepreneurial community. This microloan program implemented by the NGO does have to meet a few requirements. One, the funds must go towards something that produces revenue. Two, the interest rates on the loan cannot exceed the local bank rates. And three, the program must be established in compliance with the local laws. Although we at TCP Global do have our own recommendations to maximize the success and sustainability of the microloan program, as long as the NGO's program fits within these criteria, they are free to lend out the funds however they see fit. Now, perhaps the most important part of the lending process is what comes next. Once those $1,500 have been lent out by the NGO and been repaid twice, the NGO is eligible to receive more funds from us. In other words, we can send them an additional $1,500. And the best part is that once the NGO passes this benchmark of twice lent and twice repaid, they're able to keep half of everything we send them. Or put into other words, they're able to keep $750 for every $1,500 that we send them. Using our model, NGOs have earned an average of $2,000 per year, which they use for running their own NGO, paying helpers, purchasing equipment, financing special projects, and more. And finally, although US Peace Corps volunteers often serve as facilitators in these programs, they cannot directly oversee the program itself. That is up to the NGO. If you'd like to reach out to us, or if you need more information, go to www.columbiaproject.org or TCP Global's Facebook page. For specific questions, you can email our director, Helene Dudley, at helenedudley at yahoo.com. Okay, thank you, Ann. I'm John, and I'd like to tell you about TCP Global and the kind of work that we do. John. What is TCP Global? Sorry We're a team of consultants that. based in the hit. There we go. Okay. Okay, back to the slideshow. Yes. John was a Peace Corps volunteer in the Ukraine who did this for us. We've gotten help from many Peace Corps volunteers. Okay, so the next slide. 
Okay, so although TCP Global is small, it addresses a gap in microloan coverage. Since we work with grassroots organizations already working effectively in the community, they know the borrowers and are therefore better able to determine which individuals and businesses have a realistic chance of success. Uh, in small communities, uh, people at the first rung of the economic ladder have very few options for getting loans for 50 to $500. Basically, their only option is to borrow from the daily lenders who, who are like payday lenders in the United States that charge up to 10% daily interest. Um, studies in Colombia show that the daily lenders, 45% of the daily lenders in Colombia charge interest that's greater than 25% per month, which is 300% a year. It's pretty much impossible to get ahead as a small businessman if you have to pay that amount of interest. Um, in, and even if you could access uh, a microfinance institution, most of them find that the $50 to $500 loans are just too costly to administer, so that they just aren't available. Uh, I went to a microcredit summit in Colombia about 10 or 12 years ago, and uh, they had a chart that showed how much it costs to administer microloans of different sizes. A microloan could be $50,000 in some areas, um, and for a $50,000 loan, it might cost 5 or 10% of the value of the loan, to cover the administrative cost. But when you get down to the $50, $150 loan, uh, it's, it can be three, it can be 150 times the value of the loan is what it costs to administer. So loans just are not made available. In addition, most lenders require collateral or credit history, which people at the very lowest rung simply do not have. And thirdly, most international programs focus on population centers. And, and that's not really a criticism. It makes total sense from their point of view. If they only have X number of administrative staff hours, it makes perfect sense for them to devote those administrative staff hours where they can reach the most people, which tends to be in a population center rather than some small village that they have to travel two or three hours um, to meet. But our program, on the other hand, works best in those small communities because we look for organizations that are already working on the ground. Okay, next slide. Um, so our loans require no collateral. And it's not really a problem because since we work with a, a nonprofit that's already working in the community, they know the people. So they have a, they're in a very good position to identify who's really serious and who has a good chance of success. Um, and we also give loans in the $15 to $1,500 range. We've given loans for $1,500, but they're very rare. On average, our loans in, I think, Senegal average about $57. In Niger, they're around $100. In Peru, $600. Uh, in Colombia, in the $200 range. And these kinds of loans just simply aren't available in, um, for most organizations. And if you're, if you're starting on the bottom rung, it's, um, it's safer, it's more sustainable to start off with a small amount of manageable money. If people get a loan that's larger than what they really need, there's the tendency to spend it on things that they don't really need and that makes it harder to repay their loans, harder to be successful. Um, so in, in our program, you can come back for three, five, 10 loans but we want them to be small and incremental. Um, one of the requirements, as it mentioned in the video, is that the interest rate um, cannot exceed the bank rate. Um, but when we, when we identify the bank rate, it's not just their stated um, interest rate, it also includes all the fees. In Colombia, um, microfinance organization um, analysis has concluded that their effective industry uh, interest rate in Colombia approaches 40% by the time you add in all the fees. We want our partners to charge less than that, but very close to that, so that when we do create the pathway to qualify for bank loans, there's not a big increase from the interest rate they pay us to what they're going to have to pay in the formal economy. We, we do want our, our graduates from the microloan program to be able to enter the formal economy and qualify for real bank loans. We, this is the first ladder on their rung out of poverty and we want them to enter the normal economy. 
to focus on small and remote sites. As you can see in this, in this picture, uh, Magdalena is the village health promoter in Nueva Generacion Maya in the Huehuetenango area of Guatemala. Uh, there's, there's not, there are no other NGOs running around in this area. She is the only game in town. And she's been able for two years to maintain a 100% repayment rate because she knows everyone in the area and they respect her too. So they're more inclined to, to repay their loans. Okay, next slide. So the assumption is that there are a lot of return Peace Corps volunteers out there who would welcome an opportunity to be an agent for positive change in their Peace Corps sites. And RPCVs are ideally suited to introduce and mentor grassroots partner. And while the video states that the partner must be registered with a bank account in the host country, this is really only a requirement so that our 501c3, the NPCA, can release funds to an NGO bank account. So if there's a friends of group, a friends of Niger, friends of Ecuador, friends of Fiji, who would like to establish a microloan program in some small village and they have an informal group that will run the program, as long as Friends of Fiji or Friends of Niger receives those funds, we don't care if the organization in the, in the host country also has a bank account. So if, if any RPCVs are interested in setting up a microloan program, but they see some obstacles, we're happy to work with you to figure out if there's a way that we can overcome those obstacles. So next slide. Um, so uh, Will, Will started the first program for us uh, where there was a Peace Corps volunteer involved. He was an RPCV who was a, um, who was a response volunteer in Colombia. It took him over nine months to get the program set up and he had actually left the country by the time the loan program um, got established, but it's doing amazingly well. In fact, Alejo, who is the, I, I think you can tell which one's the Peace Corps volunteer here, <laughs> but Alejo still runs that program. And he is now the go-to person in the North part of Colombia for all of the other RPCVs and their counterparts. They go to see how his program works and he's been mentoring them. In, uh, in May, we're taking a potential funder to Colombia with some representatives from Nicaragua who also want to see how the program works. So Alejo will be helping us um, with that. Okay, next slide. And then this is Virginia and the program in Niger. Um, so Virginia started a school when she was in Niger about 19 years ago. And then when she left, she uh, came back and, and built a more permanent school, a better school and has been supporting that. And within 15 years, the percentage of people who were literate, who had been, uh, who got an education in, in Cabe Fo had risen to close to 100%. However, there were still no jobs. When, when uh, Virginia arrived in Cabe Fo, there wasn't even a tree. It's a very, it was a very desolate community. So they had education, but there were no job opportunities. So she decided to introduce TCP Global Microloans and people started off getting loans to raise um, goats, then sell at Ramadan, um, where they would get a, a much better return. And then they started uh, raising goats that they could use for food and raising goats on a more ongoing, uh, uh, ongoing range in the community. Uh, they've also used some of their earnings to stockpile food for when there's, I mean, uh, to, yeah, to stockpile food to help them through the, the, the lean seasons. And they've also bought medicines to make sure that the community wasn't vulnerable during uh, malaria outbreaks. Um, so next slide. And the next slide, we have Andrew. So Andrew, maybe you could tell us about your experience bringing uh, the microloan program to Fundacion. Yeah, I'd be happy to do so. Um, so I am an RPCV from Columbia from 2016 to 2018. Um, and back during my training, um, Helene and some other people from the TCP Global team came down uh, to talk to us about TCP. And we also were put in touch with Will and got to learn more about the program that he did in Swan. 
And so from sort of from the beginning when I when I got to Fundacion was looking, you know, certainly thought of TCP as, as a tool and a great resource for local NGOs that were already doing work in the community. Um, and that's how I met Yasmila, uh, the lady in the, the black and white uh, sort of flowery shirt there in the picture. Um, and she, she and Joaquin, the gentleman to her, to, behind her to the left, um, did various community activities, mostly giving away food and, and gifts at Christmas time, community cleanups, um, that kind of thing. But they always they had expressed uh, a large interest in doing something that was more sustainable, something that could really impact lives rather than just uh, you know a handout or a one-time event. And so, as Yasmila and Joaquin are both successful business people in Fundacion. Um, they seem like great partners for TCP. So this picture here was actually at our second uh, business plan writing graduation ceremony. Um, and, uh, and the younger people that you see there in the photo were local accounting students that um, did their practicums through La Oyel Medigrosa is the name of, of Yasmila's NGO. Um, so, so yeah, through when, you know, bridged La Oyel with, with TCP. Um, and, uh, and once eventually, once the money came in and we had some people that had graduated the course, we, they, they took on small loans. Um, just about all these people, as Elaine had talked about earlier, were using the, the infamous Paga Diarios or basically loan sharks. Um, and, and everybody, for instance, the people in this picture, two of them, uh, run their own small tiendas, like little tiny corner stores. One lady bakes cookies and also raises some chickens in her backyard. Um, another raises goats on nearby, uh, just outside of Fundacion. And so um, there's been a lot of challenges. There were a lot of challenges while I was there. They continue to be. Um, but I continue to stay in touch with the volunteer who is currently there, as well as, as Yasmila herself, Yasmila Joaquin. Um, because at first, I, I think the getting in the, you know, when you, when you go from an illegal activity or, you know, from a loan that, uh, that is illegal and, you know, backed by criminal activity to somebody that's, you know, running a charity, I think like developing the mindset of repayment is, is tough, but um, they continue to work hard to, to make the program work. Um, the program's grown quite a bit and now there's this, there's a solid base of, of people that really have grown their businesses. Um, Elaine visited, that was in December of 2017, December, yeah, December of 2017 when Elaine came down um, and really she got to meet people like Angela. Angela's not pictured here, but she's probably one of the biggest success stories who took just was, uh, was selling empanadas, you know, like a typical Colombian fried fast food outside the front of her house to now when, when I was leaving and it's continued to grow. Uh, when I was leaving, she was in the process of constructing a full scale restaurant, took out a bigger loan after having repaid back two. um, and now is is running a full scale restaurant alongside the alongside her house rather than just in the living room of her house. Um, so there's definitely, like I said, there's challenges um, as there are in, in these rural and, and generally lower income communities. But um, I think overall, it, I saw the impact of microloans firsthand, and and um, have been proud to be a part of, of TCP since since uh, closing my service. And um, yeah, so I think overall, like. Uh, and I believe Helene, you're, you'll be going back in May to visit again. Um, so it's, uh, it's 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 a growing program and, and something that I would I would recommend to any other RPCVs or any other PCVs you know, currently on the ground or, or RPCVs that are still involved with their communities. And Andrew continues to work with us on the TCP Global Board, um, helps us to troubleshoot. One thing Andrew mentioned was that Yasmila and Joaquin were already working in the community doing um, helpful work. So that's how we, we choose our partners. We want somebody who's already shown that this is not a job for them. They're not exploiting the community, that these are people whose, whose mission in life is to help others to get ahead. And our, our, our outstanding partners are the key to our success. Uh, our, the Columbia Project is built on on trust. We find people who are really doing good work and then we trust them to continue operating in that way and so far it's worked out well. Project funds are in essence a grant to a community organization to set up a loan program. Once the money enters a community it never comes back out again. That money stays in the community either being circulated as loan funds uh, or it's earnings for the nonprofit that and they use those earnings for other programs to benefit the community. 
Okay, next slide. So um, while there are thousands of microfinance institutions around the world, the Columbia Project TCP Global differs in several important aspects. Most of those organizations uh, have administrative overhead that they need to cover. Uh, we, on the other hand, build sustainable programs that don't need it, any outside in, in assistance. They don't need money for salaries or rent or internet because whatever they're doing in the community, those expenses are already covered. So as soon as we send microloan funds into the community, those microloan funds are available to be recycled. And so therefore the program is already sustainable from whenever the, the first funds enter the uh, community. So we have zero overhead because the um, salaries and rent are already covered. And that makes it possible for us to work well in small and remote communities. The other advantage of working in small and remote communities is that everybody knows everyone. So the people who are running the loan program, they know who's, who's a good risk, you know, who has a good small business maybe running in their house that they could expand. And then when those first loan recipients do well, they serve as examples for others in the community. Like I'm, I'm sure some of Angela's neighbors in Fundacion are, are taking note that, you know, she started off making empanadas and now she's actually building a, a store. You know, they, Colombians, Colombians are especially resourceful. I think all Peace Corps volunteers feel like their country is the best. And I, I still have that feeling about Colombia. Um, Colombians are very resourceful and they, they serve an example to each other. And not only is it the, the microloan program doesn't just help the entrepreneurs, but it also enriches the community. Like in our really small communities in Guatemala, they're very far from the um, from population center where there are stores, but by setting up small businesses in these little communities, Suddenly there's somebody locally who's selling eggs and vegetables, or maybe has an internet cafe, uh, or maybe is selling stationary items from in their house. So there's economic activity that enriches the, the community even beyond those who are participating directly in the loan program. And the, uh, the earnings from the loan program uh, fund community service projects. So as it explained in the video, once the funds have been invested twice, the, uh, the nonprofit that runs the program has the right to take out half of the funds that we've sent initially. And we thought that they would use that for salaries and computers and things for the NGO. But as it turns out, these partners like Yasmila have a laundry list of things that they want to do to help their community. So for example, in La Victoria, um, they use the funds to finish a community center. Then they set up a women's sewing cooperative and that sewing cooperative now generates enough funds from selling what they make in the cooperative that it covers all the utilities for that community center. In Niger, as I mentioned, they use some of their earnings to stockpile malaria medication so that everybody, that nobody would be vulnerable to malaria during malaria season. Um, they've used, in, in another community, they set up a fish farm next to a, a community um, a children's feeding center so that it would provide supplementary fish for the lunch program and also provides, they would also sell some of the fish and use that to cover the salaries. So our partners are very creative in making a little bit of funds go a very long way. Another thing that helps our program, I think, is that people know that the repayment community. So if they repay their loan, then there's going to be funds available five years from now when maybe their kids want to get a loan. There's going to be money in the loan pool next time they, they need a loan. So they, they, they really understand that they're all in this together and that if they protect this resource, that it's good for everyone in their community. Okay, next slide. So this is what TCP Global offers. First of all, we have the funds for the microloans. Um, we, we've been lucky, we've been fortunate recently to find two new rather significant funders. For us, significant funder is like $10,000 because we typically send maybe 
twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year overseas. But in, in the last two years, we funded over a hundred thousand in loans, and this year we're on track to fund over one hundred and fifty thousand in loans because we keep recycling all the funds that were sent in previous years. So we we do we do have funds available, but if there are friends of groups involved, we would hope that they would reach out to their members and offer them the opportunity to also help us expand our microloan programs. Uh, we have the loan tracking software and uh, the forms that people use. Uh, we've discovered it should be no surprise that people who are really good at helping poor people get ahead are not necessarily gifted accountants. So they're, they're able to take care of you know, Mrs. Gomez owes so much money and she's made these payments, but they, they can't keep track of the big picture, how much money they've gotten all together, what the delinquency rate is. So we asked them to send us just a very simple report on a monthly basis where they, they start off with the opening balance and then as payments come in, they record those and show the changing balance and then as new loans go out, what the balance is. And with that very simple log that they send us, we're able to extract that information and do all of our management reports that we would of course share with any RPCVs or group that, that wanted to set up uh, a loan program. We also have mentoring materials. We have a book that's organized by uh, different topics and we're hoping to place that on the NPCA website sometime within the next year so that whatever issue you're dealing with, you can uh, go see how that topic is covered in our TCP global materials. We also have case studies that show how we've, we've addressed the various problems that we've encountered. TCP Global is also available to consult by phone and email. And of course, we would want the, the RPCV who introduced us to that site to be in the loop because um, we've, what we learned in Niger very quickly is that the culture in a Muslim community in Africa is really different from a, a, a community in Colombia. There's also very big differences between Guatemala and Colombia. So it really helps to have an RPCV who knows the local culture and involved in the mentoring process. As we've mentioned earlier, Alejo is, come, is evolving as a kind of, uh, of a, a, a network guru for all the other loan administrators in Colombia. And in May, when we go down there with a funder, uh, our potential funder, they're bringing some people from Nicaragua who will also be uh, consulting with Alejo to see how the program works in Swan. And we'd, we'd like to have a really vibrant network of loan administrators because while the Columbia Project staff is available to help people, it's nothing like hearing it from someone who's actually administered a microloan program. I've, I've always been serving from the United States, but I'm, I'm not on the ground like Alejo is. So it's really valuable to be able to talk to people who have actually implemented the program. Okay, next slide. Okay, so this is a slide that nobody on my team likes because nobody likes to look at all these numbers, but you know, the, the devil is in the details. We, we need to have those nice, warm, fuzzy stories like Virginia, Virginia site in Niger, but funders and donors and uh, prospective microloan sites want to know, well, why should I do this? So if you could just look at the age in years up here at the top and then look at these numbers in red, the number of times each dollar is invested, you can see that on average, every dollar that we send is invested about once per year on average. And and that's apart from the money that they take out for their special projects. If you go down here towards the bottom, the total partner earnings, you see, for example, that um, Peru has received $20,000 from us over the last three and a half years. And they've also earned over $15,000, which they've used for special projects. They recently had a mudslide in, um, in Peru in Trujillo, and so they use some of their earnings to do a uh, reforestation project um, and put in big reservoirs to 
to hold the water so that it doesn't run down into the villages and then they they have planted trees. So they're, they're very creative in how they use these <coughs> that they get from us. You can also see at the bottom what the average loan size is. And we, we share these reports with, um, with our various partners so they can compare their to the results that people have in other areas. Okay, next slide. So this is our contact information. Um, if uh, anyone is interested, they can find more information on our website. And uh, there's a lot of photo albums with text on the TCP Global Facebook page. And the, the pictures tell a thousand words. So the, the, the pictures and the text on the Facebook page are really very helpful. Um, so if there are any questions. Okay, so Cheryl wants to know if we'll be we'll, if we'll be sharing the uh, the PowerPoint. Uh, yes, and actually the 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 PowerPoint is on the um, the page on our uh, the NPCA website, the event page that uh, that you went to to get the link to this uh, webinar. Uh, it's it, the that particular slide with all the the uh, data is actually uh, was from a few months ago. It was just updated today, so. I will post a new version of that uh, tomorrow along with the recording of this. Okay. And Daniel, Daniel, can you tell us what your, um, what your interest is, why you signed up for the webinar tonight? Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay, great. Uh, I'm the group leader of Friends of Nepal, and I just thought it sounded interesting. Maybe it was something we could get involved in. Okay. Yeah. Well, you have my contact information. We're um, very much interested in getting involved with Friends of groups. There's only so far that our little team can take this, but if we can um, get Friends of groups in other countries with other language skills and, and cultures, uh -huh. we, we think that our model is like the best thing since sliced bread because mm -hmm. Great. It, doesn't, it doesn't take much money. And it every time I go to Colombia or Guatemala and I see how much they do with so little, it is just really inspiring. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that you joined us this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, does anyone have any questions? Okay, well, thank you all for joining us, Anne. Yes, thank you so much, Helene. I mean, this, this is uh, an amazing program. I'm very proud to be uh, working with Helene and with TCP Global on, on this program. Um, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot to, to comprehend your, your, your PowerPoint presentation and your extremely helpful. Uh, I'm glad to see a couple of other affiliates here thinking of expanding this and uh, this, this recording will be posted on our website and I'll be sending it out to all affiliate groups actually in my next affiliate group newsletter. Um, but if you have any questions um, at any time, please feel free to reach out to Helene. Uh, she's been wonderful and responsive uh, to all of our questions and we're uh, very proud of this, uh, this program and looking forward to seeing how we could expand it to other countries around the world. So um, I'm going to end the recording. I'll stay on a little bit longer if anybody has any further questions, but uh, Thank you so much, uh, everybody, for joining us this evening. And thank you, Helene. And thank Thanks you for a lot, Helene. Thank yes. you. Thank you both. Thanks, everybody.